Welcome to the Vitamatter YouTube channel. I just completed a road trip from Chicago to Gulf Shores, Alabama, where I am now. Look behind me, you can see the Gulf of Mexico. If you watch this video, you'll learn how the truck performed, how the charging stops went along the way, and learn some tips on how you can take your EV on a road trip just like this. So join me on this journey and see how the adventure went. All right, we've charged up to 100%. Thanks to the new update, I can see it says exactly 100%. And we're headed to the Gulf of Mexico, specifically Gulf Shores, Alabama. The car is still calculating my exact range, so this circle's approximate, but it wants us to stop. Looks like around Lafayette, Indiana. We'll see if we uh, do that or not. And then further down here, it already has our Bucky's stop planned. I hope to stop at a Bucky's right before we get to the Gulf. Um, I've never been to a Bucky's, and they have some pretty nice EA charging and Mercedes charging. And Tesla charging down there, which, by the way, is all available to us now. We have the A to Z Tesla charging adapter, the so-called Typhoon adapter. So we can use Tesla charging on the way down this time. And we've also got regular EA and Mercedes options and EVgo and all the usual charge point stuff, too. So stay tuned. We're going to go on this long road trip starting now. And we'll update you when we get to the next charging stop. We're stopping a little early in Lafayette, Indiana. Uh, McDonald's break, very crucial for a road trip. So I've got 80 miles left of range. I'm at about 43% as you can see. Here's the stats for this part of the data. I've been to this EA charger before at the Walmart and from here it looks like I'm gonna have an open spot. Hopefully at least one of those three open ones works. And I'll show you some stats here for the trip in a minute on the center console, on the center dash. Let's see what we got. All right, cross your fingers, plug and charge works. Let's see. Yes, I want to continue. Why do you make me push this button? All right, 175 kilowatts. Very good. Family's over at Panera, and I'll be hanging out here for a bit. This shouldn't take too long. All right, wrapping up our charge here at the Electrify America at Walmart. We got here with one spot occupied and now four spots are occupied so we got here just in time maybe beating a little bit of the rush for chicago uh for the uh, great migration down south we got illinois 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 and we've got indiana here so got here at a good time this guy is probably not gonna have a good morning when he wakes up looks like his truck got clamped and covered on his windshield I'm guessing for parking here illegally overnight, or at least, maybe not illegally, but was trespassing. So, bummer for him. I would say another five minutes and we're good to go. If you don't know already, mach -E's and Lightnings, they taper off a lot at 80%. We left around 110 kilowatts or 120 kilowatts. I went inside 
and as soon as it hits 80 it goes down to 55 50 kilowatts something like that which is normal for these Fords um, and it's a flat curve before that but you don't want to charge past 80 unless you're doing something else anyway and you might as well be charging but there's not really any point in charging past 80 percent just unplug at 80 keep going hit the road and move on and find the next charger so you can charge at a faster rate at the next stop all right i'll keep you guys updated and i'm going to update my log here so that at the end of the video you can see all the stats and all the um uh, data for this trip i think so the car is recommending we stop here uh just south of indianapolis i don't want to stop that quickly i hope we don't have to i'm hoping to make it down to louisville or almost louisville um i'm guessing although it looks like we're well within this range circle once i start up the car and it calculates what this route is going to be like in terms of consumption i have a feeling this blue circle is going to end up right around here so i don't think we're going to make it but i guess if we have to do a quick Quick charge just past Indiana, it's not the worst thing in the world. I also noticed that it doesn't seem like the Tesla chargers are, they're not really showing up as well uh, or as frequently in this Ford map as I would have hoped. So I've been using the Tesla app on the side to calculate uh, other options or decide other options besides just the normal CCS locations. I prefer Tesla charging so far. It's early. I've just done a couple of test charges on Tesla supercharging with this truck, but generally I'm, I'm starting out with a hypothesis that I prefer the Tesla charging. Um, but this, this uh, Ford map seems to prioritize um, non-Tesla charging, I guess, unfortunately. We'll see how that goes, but I'll keep you updated and let you know where we end up. All right, stats for this trip. So far. I'm gonna unplug at 56 kilowatt hours delivered, 82% departure and 25 minutes of charging. Here we go. It calculated the exact, more exact range using the route and we're just inside the ring so i'm gonna try and make it here to louisville and charge there it looks like it's an electrify america at a walmart which is great uh, i've had good luck with those as i just did so let's push it there i might do a little bit of hyper miling some drafting uh, from a safe distance behind some 18 wheelers and stuff using adaptive cruise control but let's try to make it to louisville and we'll see if uh, we can get there meanwhile headed back to the panera Picking up the family, and we'll be on our way. We've arrived just north of Louisville, still technically in Indiana, at 15% at another EA station. This one, I can only grab a 150 kilowatt charger. All the 350s are taken. There's only two of them, but they're still taken. Meanwhile, let's look at our trip and see how the last leg went. Trip two, 173 miles. Wow, that's more than I thought. 2 hours 40 minutes at 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour. We were helped a lot by the temperature rising. We're now in the high 40s and there was some slowdowns and traffic and just generally lots of cars so that kind of helped the efficiency a little bit but we're going to charge up here for a bit. We're, it looks like we're still rising at about 125 kilowatts. That's not bad and we'll get a bite to eat. Lots of options here at the Walmart just north of Louisville, Kentucky. Tons of options to eat so 
we'll check back in when we leave. Man, look at the paint on it. It looks nice. They did a good job. Oh, perfect timing. I was like, what truck? You know what truck looks good. They did a good job. Look, 57k above 80% makes sense, so we're ending at 83, and we added 78 on this one. But remember, this is the second charge. Uh, we already started on the other one, so it's gonna be <clears throat> it's gonna be 78 plus I think it was six minutes. So I'll do the math later. But 78 plus whatever we got the first go around, how many kilowatts we got? On our way, we'll have plenty of juice to get to. Bowling Green, Kentucky, and we're leaving at 83%. Check in with us at the museum. Here we are at the Corvette charging station at the Corvette Museum, and I can hear the race cars across the street at the racetrack motoring around. One of the more exciting places to charge. All right, so far on this trip, it's been walk away reliable. I haven't had to do anything or change charging stations or anything. So I'm tempted just to walk away and check it later. Although there is that one annoying button that it asks you to put continue on, which I think it'll just continue on its own if I don't push it, but I just push it anyway to speed things up. You know what, I'm gonna walk away. I'm not even gonna watch. I'm that confident on this trip that it's working well. So stay tuned for the full update. Let's see who's getting the car delivered. Oh, they got someone's warming up. Z06 even. Oh, Z06 even. Good call. Man, that sounds good. Do they work here? Or is that his car? Her car. His car. It's on the front of the hood there. It's like all, yeah, it's all steamy. Look at that. It's burning. Yeah, it is. You guys see that? Huh. Look at the front of the hood, it's like steaming. It's like melting or something, you see that? Yeah, it's probably got condensation coming out of it. I guess, maybe it was outside all night or something, or it just got washed. All right, all done at the Corvette factory. We're down to 56, because we're post 80%, of course. 55 kilowatts over 26 minutes. Easy, successful charging stop. Thank you, EA and Corvette factory. Man, with his air, I see.
All right. For the first time, I'm at a Bucky's, and also for the first time, I'm charging on Mercedes charging network. I'm at 21%. I'll show you the trip data in a minute. But first, I wanted to note a few things about this Mercedes charger. There's a nice long inset parking lot for hefty vehicles like my Lightning. The other spots all have normal charging locations, but this one's got a nice long inset, so that's nice. Plenty of space, not in the way. The Mercedes device is very Mercedes looking. Uh, German, clean, efficient looking, and uh, very new and shiny and luxurious even, if I have to say. Uh, long, long cables too, for when you don't get the parking just right, or you're in a situation where maybe, I don't know, you're backing in with a car that has a front charge mount like mine, something like that, so. So far, very impressed. The handshake took, I don't know, less than a minute, longer than maybe normal, but it's the first time I've charged here, so uh, no complaints there. And look, on this 400 watt, kilowatt charger, we're at 164, that's about right, I'd say about normal for like an EA station or similar. Maybe a little slower, but it's it's wavering around a little bit. So far, very happy, but it's worth noting, these are 400 watt chargers. So you Kia and Hyundai owners, you uh, GM Ultium platform owners, you'll have um, very fast charging here if your car can handle it and if your battery uh, condition can also accept it. This thing's really firing up fast now. So, so far, very happy, very impressed with this location. Right off the highway, that's the exit right there. And it's a bustling metropolis, like a like an oasis in the desert, this Athens, Alabama Bucky's. So can't wait to go inside and check it out for the first time. And let's check out some of the trip history information for this lake. All right, here are the stats. We caught a lot of good luck in terms of efficiency um, with traffic, although not so much for travel speed. Uh, so the efficiency is a little elevated. We might have even had a tailwind here and there. It's been somewhat windy in our favor, so that's been helping. Temperatures are still great. We're in the low 60s, high 50s. Uh, as you can see, 167 miles and two and a half hours or so. So those are the stats. Of course, I'll put all these stats in later. Uh, you'll see it on the screenshot of the uh, Excel spreadsheet. And also you'll see at the end of the video all of the recordings all of the uh, data from all the charging stops put together also of note there is a dog park back here or at least an informal dog park with dog bags garbage cans garbage cans for ev owners as well one guy icing it but he's in the car so he'd probably move if need be no big deal but uh again really impressed with this charging spot thanks mercedes oh also of note, if you're traveling through Athens, Alabama, we are like four miles from an EA station, which I'm sure would have done just fine. Nothing wrong at all with that EA station that I know of. I just wanted to try the Mercedes and the Buckies. One last note, I promise this is the last thing. <laughs> Mercedes charging on the PlugShare app was noted as having a $45 charge for 15 minutes. I'm guessing Alabama can only charge, at least at this point in 2024, by time, not by kilowatt hour. And $45 seems kind of steep, but I guess if you can charge at 400 kilowatts with a, an EV other than mine, you could get a lot of juice very quickly and they'd be, who knows, maybe losing money. So if you have like a Bolt or something or an old Kona, be careful because that might be a lot of money to pay, 45 bucks, uh, for what might not be very many kilowatt hours. So just be warned of that. All right, enough chat of this. I'm gonna go check the car wash out, check the store out and I'll update you when we're done charging.
charging at Bucky's. There's the totals for you. Also available on the spreadsheet. And 10 out of 10 full marks for this Bucky's and Mercedes charging location via charge point. Thank you and on our way. We didn't really need the charge, but we found a place we want to have dinner at, which is Puckett's. And so we just left Bucky's. It wasn't long ago. We're still at 69%. But since we're going to eat anyway, I found this medium speed, you know, DC fast charger uh, right almost literally next to the Puckett's. Puckett's is right there. And we're right here next to this lovely bolt. So we're going to charge here for a bit. Uh, looks like we're going to be in the just below 60 kilowatt hours or kilowatts rather. The app, the PlugShare app said it was a 62 kilowatt charger, which makes sense based on what we're getting. This is listed as a 125. Not sure why PlugShare and my charging speed say one thing, whereas the machine itself says something else. But no worries, we're here for a while. And of course, we'll get all the stats as usual. Let me get those on camera and drop those down just in case we stick around here for a bit. Depends on the weight at Puckett's. All right, so obviously a very short trip. Two kilowatt hours, 37 miles, and we arrived at 67%, I think it was. I'll check it later, I got it on a video. All right, stay tuned for how this one goes. Should be a pretty low kilowatt hours, small charge, but how can you turn down a charger next to one of your favorite restaurants in the area? All right, on our way again. I'll have to check to see how many kilowatt hours we got from this on the app. It doesn't sh say. I did have to stop and restart. Here we go. I did have to stop and restart uh, because I forgot I had a charge limit of 90% on this truck. So I had to unplug, plug it in again, and redo. But we're on our way. We're at 96% state of charge. And next stop is the hotel. All right, our final stop for the night at the Spring Hill Suites in Prattville. They have, looks like Tesla wall chargers here. And they're both available and they're not iced out. Lucky us. So we'll charge up overnight. We arrived at 46% state of charge. And I'll get you some of the numbers on this last leg here on the screen as we check in for the night. So have a good sleep and we'll talk to you in the morning. All right, it's the next morning. We're on our way. We got 100% charge. As you can see, for free, thanks to the Spring Hill Suites by Marriott in Prattville. And luckily the one charger out of the two was working and not occupied and not iced out. On our way to Starbucks, and then we'll continue on to Fairhope, Alabama, and then the beach. We're here at another Bucky's. 
near Orange Beach, Alabama, pretty close to the coast. And we're doing one more top up at the Mercedes Chargers again before we get down to the beach and get into some of the you know, strand islands and kind of outer islands, which of course don't have a lot of charging infrastructure. So quick top up here. Meanwhile, I've been noticing tons of trucks driving by on trailers and it looks like there must have been some kind of huge truck show maybe near Pensacola or something this weekend yesterday. Oh, nice Mustang too. Look at that. So it's been kind of a car show on wheels on the highway here. I'll try to get some shots and show you here uh, of some of the show trucks and other vehicles we've seen driving around. But uh, I'll of course record all the data and let you guys know how this went. Um, but uh, after this top up, we'll be at our destination, which is Gulf Shores, Alabama. We're very close. All right, I talked to this lady with this truck here. There is a huge truck show yesterday, Friday, and today uh, down in Orange Beach, which is pretty close to here. But apparently we just missed out. A lot of people are leaving already. But man, it's still a pretty good car show here in the Bucky. Just checking out these trucks. trip summary two and a half hours 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour at 173 miles we're seeing pretty consistent with getting around 173 miles between charging stops just by choice if, if not coincidence and then from the charger before I disconnect we've got yeah the rate okay here we go 128 kilowatts of power that's pretty good we got 51 kilowatt hours for 18 bucks and 20 minutes of charging. So with that, I think we're gonna cut it off and move on. All right, to Fairhope. All right, we made it to Fairhope, Alabama. Never been here before, it is really nice here. And here's the trip stats just from the Bucky's to Fairhope. So I'll add this all up, of course, in the table. But really nice charging station as well. Huge solar panels, all covered from the rain and sun. And uh, looking forward to taking a walk around and checking out the town. After this, we'll be headed to the beach itself and Gulf Shores along the string islands that protect the coast. All right, she's gonna unplug it and let's see. We got nine kilowatt hours for less than two bucks for an hour and a half. On our way to the actual beach, although Fairhope itself is very lovely, very lovely as you saw.
All right, well, we've been here in Gulf Shores, Alabama and Dauphin Island for about a week, but unfortunately, it's time for us to go back. We had a lot of fun, as you saw, but today we're gonna be heading out from Gulf Shores back up north along the I-65 corridor to Chicago. So stay tuned again to hear more about how charging goes, how the truck performs, and hear about more data regarding the charging infrastructure on this route. All right, we've been here about a week, and as you saw, we had a lot of fun down in Gulf Shores, Alabama, and on Dauphin Island, but unfortunately, it's time to head home. It's very early in the morning, so apologies for my low voice, but we're getting the truck ready. I'm at about 94% state of charge, and we're gonna be headed back to Chicago from the coast of Gulf of Mexico. So stay tuned with me for more charging updates, data, and news and reports on how the infrastructure goes from south to north this time. Here's what we're in for in terms of what the truck is planning. It's actually less charging stops than what a better route planner had mapped out. Better route planner has a stopping, uh, I believe it's five times, so an extra stop. Um, Ford only has a stopping, as you can see, four times. Um, maybe a better route planner knows something that uh, Ford doesn't in the app, or maybe they just want us to charge more frequently but quicker. I'm not a big fan of charging past 80%. Uh, there's a good chance that Ford has us doing that. So uh, take these stops with a grain of salt. We'll also stop for unexpected things uh, along the way. Let's see. No, well, Ford's done a pretty good job, actually, in having us charge uh, up to, but not much exceeding 80. That's the only one above 80. And I like this one because I've got nothing against the EV or uh, Electrify America charger in Lafayette. I'm just picturing myself at one o'clock in the morning, stopping at Lafayette, seemingly so close to home, um, but still having to charge one more time right about here. I'm hoping we can just stop in Indianapolis instead of here. Cause this seems so close to home, <laughs> psychologically speaking. I like this, so maybe I'll just juice up as much as I can here in Indianapolis and uh, make it the rest of the way from there. All right, as you can see, I'm at 94% state of charge, like I said. In case you're wondering, here's how I record all the charging data and all the information from between each stop. Uh, we got down to stop number eight here in Fairhope on the way down. And I'll be adding a subsequent step, I guess step nine, uh, for the return trip up north. All right, as I said, we're at 94% state of charge before we leave. Here's what I use to record all the data from the charging stops and in between. Uh, we're at step eight now. Fairhope was our last uh, charging stop on the road trip. All right, as you can see, I'm at 94%, like I said. In case you're wondering, here's how I record all the data from each of the charging stops. Also worth pointing out that we'll stop for other reasons, like I said, kid bathroom breaks, meals, things like that. We might wanna to go to Bucky's again. So take all this with a grain of salt. We will end up just uh, freestyling um, and not necessarily stopping on this uh, plan, but it's still a pretty good indicator of how many stops we have in, in store for us at least. So uh, we're gonna finish packing up the truck, get that frunk loaded up, the bed's almost loaded up, and we'll be on our way.
right, first charging stop is at a Tesla supercharger, the first Tesla supercharger of our trip. Uh, we've got a perfect spot for a Lightning. As you know, Lightnings have the charger on the front left fender, driver's side fender. And since Lightnings require either two stops to be taken up or two stops, uh, one stop to park in and one stop to charge, we're gonna pull over here and park at the end, the rightmost side of the charger. That way, I mean, I guess someone could park here, although they can't really charge here. So either way, I have to be one spot offset over to the side here, like you're seeing. Otherwise the cord won't reach. So I've got my A to Z Typhoon charger adapter that arrived just before we left, which is fantastic. And I'm gonna charge it up. All right, click it down. Oh, that felt better. All right, that felt better. Let's see if this works. All right, right away it worked. User error the first time on my part. So we'll verify that it's working. Trip to 166 miles, two hours, 44 minutes, and 2.1 kilowatt hours. So I'll update on my log here. In case you're curious, uh, we're at 165 kilowatts. I think that's pretty good for 31%. I might have been a little higher at the EA station, but the EA station near us, it was not looking promising, to be honest. Uh, it has a plug share score of 4.8, which is pretty discouraging. Looks pretty new in the pictures. It's at the nearby Walmart seven plugs and then the reviews we're looking not so great either stations one and four are down one and two will not connect uh it didn't give me the warm and fuzzies that it was going to work out so i'm really glad there was a tesla charger here um basically across the street which my wife noticed so thanks to her for that anyway we'll probably be here another 30 minutes or so and then we'll be on our way so i'm gonna go for a walk go to the bathroom that sort of thing all right, I'll update you when we leave. All right, we were here maybe 10 minutes. We're at 49% state of charge. Just a quick stop, and we're gonna press on to the next station, which has the Panera, which we want. So keep you posted for the next time. All right, just to recap, the last stop was gonna be about 30 minutes, but uh, we, when we stopped there for a kid bathroom break, they weren't really interested in anything around there to eat. So instead we just did the bathroom break, charged for a relatively short amount of time, and kept going. Now we're at our originally intended charging stop, which is a, as you can see, Magic Dock charger. And we're gonna charge here. Well, I won't be charging right here. It's a handicapped spot apparently, but I'll be charging right next door at a Magic Dock location. Actually for the first time ever. I've been to a Magic Dock location, but I was in my Model 3. So instead we're going to charge at a Magic Dock location with a Ford Lightning. How cool is that? We're going to try this out. Alright, stay tuned. Let's see how this goes. We arrived at 29% and I'll get the other stats later. In fact, we can probably see them right now. There we go. 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour, 50 minutes driving for 52 miles. And I just realized that this guy is charging here, of course, so that's going to hamper my speed. So I'm going to move over one spot. Charge over here. I read on the... Uh, plug share or app or something like that earlier that this one's having some service work done so I didn't want to charge at station three the station at first was the handicap spot so here we are landing at 1c charge my EV charge here 
Yep. Press and hold the button on the handle for two seconds. Push into the dock and pull out to detach the tank. Just like charging location. All right. Let's see. That didn't work. Maybe I'll just use my adapter. Might be easier. There we go. One C. Nope, didn't work. Weird. This is one C, right? One C up. Yeah, one C. Hmm. Weird. Press and hold the button on the handle. You know what? I'll just use my adapter because this isn't working. If this works. Alright, right away. Perfect. Cool. Initializing charging. Look at that. Working great. And this is a really nice screen. I don't have to rely on the. Huh. I don't have to rely on the uh, Ford screen to tell me my charging rate. I can just use the uh, app here. I wonder if this is available on all Tesla chargers for Lightnings or if it's just because it's a magic dock. I'll have to check. But this is great. Oh, beautiful. Look at that speed. All right, looks like we leveled out approximately at the same rate as the last stop. We were at like 165 or something to the vehicle. This is 162 out of the charger, so pretty close, pretty close. But I'm happy with that. And once I just forgot about the adapter, which maybe this one doesn't even have an adapter. No, uh, it definitely looks like an adapter. It would have come out. I don't know why it wouldn't come out, but luckily I didn't need it. I've got my own adapter. So I'll keep watching this. Go get some cookout. I'm very excited to get some cookout. As a former North Carolina resident, I noticed there's a cookout here, which made me happy. And so I'm gonna be on my way. Happy charging lightning. See you in a bit. All right, we're on our way. Here's the stats. And unplugging now. back at that Mercedes Bucky's location we visited on the way down with the dog park right next to the charging location which we love um, you can see on this trip it says 120 and an hour and 38 and 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour but we had an intermediate stop in here for a kid potty break 
and frankly myself too. So that's a little misleading. What I'll do is I'll flash the actual mileage and stats up for this one after I combine the first leg of this trip with the second leg. Also know that the miles per kilowatt hour will be inflated because there was a huge accident on the highway, which we avoided, but that meant taking side roads, which meant lower speed, which meant higher efficiency. So kind of an unusual situation. And we ended up with way more miles um, of range remaining than we actually needed on this leg, just because of the lower speeds. So it took a little while, but that's okay. We're safe and hope everyone else is on the, on the highway as well. So when we got here, we were at around 28%. And now we'll just charge for probably, I don't know, half an hour or something. Check out the Bucky's again, go for a little walk, and then we'll be on our way. So stay tuned for more of the post charging stats here in a minute. They even have a washing station just for EVs right there. That silver box is a long pull charging station, or a, <laughs> rather a window washing station, which is awesome. I couldn't even find one at the gas pumps, to be honest. They must be hiding somewhere else, but the EV station had one, which is awesome. So nice job there, Bucky's. back at the National Corvette Museum after that last stint. Wow, there was a lot of traffic. Nashville has so much traffic, um, but uh, nothing you can do about that. I guess it's just a popular city. We did 178 miles uh, over three hours and ended up at 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Again, like the last stop, the efficiency was helped by lower speeds and traffic and side roads and stuff to avoid the traffic. So um, you gotta take the good with the bad, I guess. We had arrived at 18%, not 19 as it says now, or 20, it was 18% arrival. And the 350 kilowatt charger is broken. So we're stuck here at 150, unfortunately. But uh, we'll get it charged up, take a stretch, and uh, we'll be on our way probably 45 minutes, I'm guessing, we'll see. But I'll do some calculations and see what the next stop's gonna be. All right. the. Lucid next to me left and this one that says it was broken. It says it's now fixed. So I'm at 118 kilowatts now. I'm gonna stop it and switch to a faster charger 39 kilowatt hours 48% 16 minutes and 660. I'm gonna switch and see if I get that 10 minute burst of speed from a different device or if the battery is too hot or whatever. So let's give it a shot and see. All right, let's see what it gets up to now that I switched from the 150 to the 350 kilowatt charger. It was at around, I think, 120, 118 when I unplugged. All right, we're blowing past that. All right, this is good. Oh, this is worth it. Worth it. Oh yeah, worth it already. Maybe we'll get the 10 minute of burst again like we just went to a new charger, for example. Oh yeah, it's totally worth it. Fantastic. Now I'm tempted to try that one, which showed broken when I pulled up. The guy in the Lucid said, this one's been having problems. And now it says it's working. So if I was truly scientific right now, I would go and test that one as well. But I don't feel like testing that one. I'm just gonna wait on this one, but very successful. Worth testing and worth switching for sure. After five minutes, it's down to 124 kilowatts. So it was fast at the beginning, not as fast uh, as the beginning as it is now, but it was pretty fast for a while. It's still faster than when I unplugged from there, so that's good, but uh, it was worth it, but not as worth it as I initially thought anyway. 
All right, we're at 80%. Uh, we're just gonna stop in Clarksville, Indiana, which is the Walmart and Taco Bell we stopped on the way down. So we don't need any of this or most of this. We're gonna stop it here, get the stats, 43 kilowatt hours, 80% state of charge, $8.80. We're here for 21 minutes on top of the previous partial charge right next door, of course. All right, on our way again as the sun sets at the Corvette Museum. Goodbye, Corvette Museum. All right, here we are back at the Walmart in Clarksville, Indiana. It's initiating charging now. We ended up at 38% on this trip, and here's the stats. It was just a relatively short trip, 116 miles an hour 40 and 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour. We're going to charge here for a bit, and then we'll be off to hopefully our final charging stop in Lafayette, Indiana. All right, here we are charging up, and I noticed the bolt next to us is charging at a 350 kilowatt station at 99% in a bolt. We can charge as much as 50 kilowatts on a good day, and right now is probably way less, but I don't feel so bad. They're about to get some idle fees, so at least the system's working in that regard. So anyway, thanks Bolt for blocking that 350 kilowatt charger when you can't, but it's typical for bolts, it seems like. Anyway, we're gonna go do one more pit stop at Walmart as we eat our Taco Bell, and then we'll be out of here one more stop after this, I hope, in Lafayette, and then back home to Chicago. Things are going really well, except for all the traffic we had in Nashville, and then south of there in Alabama, due to some, I think, pretty nasty accidents when they closed the road. Other than those two, it's uh, been a pretty good trip. Things have been going well. And Electrify America and Mercedes charging, and Tesla charging has all been working. So we're thankful for that and for our safe trip. All right, talk to y'all soon. I'll give you the update here when we leave in a sec. Well, I did say we'd have one more charging stop, but I lied about where it was gonna be. Rather than go all the way to Lafayette, Indiana, where the Electrify America station was fairly occupied, and I've been monitoring for the past hour, most of the charging stations there were occupied, plus the fastest charging stations there were almost always occupied as well. The, the 350s were taken and the 150 kilowatts were uh, sometimes available, sometimes not. Rather than just getting there and having to wait for a charger at like one o'clock in the morning and or deal with a slow charger at one o'clock in the morning, we just decided to stop in Lebanon, Indiana, which is just outside Indianapolis, and charge there instead. So we'll do a deep charge. I'm guessing I'll need about 91% or something to get back to Chicago. Um, if I lose patience and unplug before then, maybe I'll just do some hypermiling at a safe distance behind some trucks to get us home. But uh, happy that this charger is available with plenty of stalls and reliable as always for us at least. So I'll update you with some stats. Uh, we pulled in at 34%. And here's some uh, trip stats, as you can see on your screen here, on the most recent leg before we start our final leg here. Um, and of course, stick around for the documents, the uh, sheets that show all the different charging um, statistics for this leg as well. All right, I'll update you when we leave, but so far things are going well. And we're done. We can get out of here now. and continue on our way. All right, we're leaving at 83% and we'll be on our way to Lafayette. All right, got the adapter back, we're on our way. One more stop, which is home. 2622 for this charge. Alright, so we made it back home, and since you made it this far in the video, I'm going to spend some time describing some of the key points I see in this data. First of all, the overall cost at the bottom, under normal cost, that's $334. The normal cost is how I describe it. It means that this is the cost that most customers would be paying if they used the same charging I did. 
This is as opposed to the column next to it called actual cost. The actual cost is what I actually paid on this trip. It's a little different than most consumers since I recently joined the Ford uh, Blue Oval charging network and therefore I had 250 free kilowatt hours of charging. So I didn't actually pay for those first few EA uh, station charges. That discounted cost due to the EA station charging was $195. It's a one-time benefit. If I did the trip again today, I'd be paying the full $334 on the left. Uh, the last charge, charge 15, is a free municipal charger at my house. Anybody can use that. You can also notice some other statistics, uh, dollars per mile, dollars per kilowatt hour, kilowatts of speed, and you can even look at each charging network and see what a typical cost across that charging network is uh, and what their typical speed is, at least on my truck. I noted that Tesla was not that expensive, so that's nice, and they weren't any slower really than EA. Uh, so it was nice as a new Tesla customer with the Lightning to see that uh, they're at least consistent, if not better, with EA charging and uh, just as reliable on this trip, if not more. Lastly, you'll see I added a gas-powered car for comparison on the right, uh, the Ford F-150 Tremor 4x4. I got these numbers off the EPA uh, fueleconomy.gov website. This is the EPA fuel mileage for highway. That's 20 miles to the gallon. I am pretty sure this Ford truck, uh, this gas truck, would not get 20 miles to the gallon. The EPA number is much lower um, 